Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. This is Chris M. And I'd like to welcome you to this conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experience. Uh, today, we'll be talking about the other half of the safeties with a brief review of the safeties, the Kundalini Awakening safety protocols that we already discussed last week this time. Uh, first, though, I would like to say thank you to Amelia Centara for her gift of this program and and I'd like to thank her, her family, and the Kingdom of Kerry and the country of Ireland uh, for uh, sponsoring this this program so that uh, this Kundalini uh, information can reach reach into a broader understanding through the population. So thank you, uh, uh, Amelia Centara and all of your family. Thank you very much. Also, I would like to thank Eileen Loro and Ed, who will only let me say his first name, for all of the help that they have given. I would like to thank Glenn Ola for the website management, and that website is Kundalini Awakening Systems onecom and that's the number one. Um, I would like to uh, to oh, I see. Yeah, I would like to uh, give you some some other areas where this information can be reached, and those other areas would be. Uh, the website that I just mentioned, Kundalini Awakening Systems One dot com, but also uh, on Facebook you have Kundalini Awakening Systems One in the group areas. There you also have Kundalini Awakening with an exclamation point. Um, that's a public group on Facebook. You have a Kundalini Ashram which is on Facebook, as well as Kundalini Healing on the Facebook network. Uh, in on the Yahoo network we have. Uh, Kundalini Awakening Systems 1 at Yahoo Groups. We have Kundalini uh, Healing at Yahoo Groups. And so you can go in there, just, you know, uh, it'll ask you to give you, to, to, to give some sort of a blurb. Just say, heard you on the, on, on Blog Talk or something like that. And, uh, the moderator or myself will, will bring you into the community. I do recommend communities for people who are inside the Kundalini or, or wanting to explore the Kundalini simply because uh, it can be so, so devastating to be alone in some of these uh, experiences sometimes. And so, you know, I would encourage you to, to, you know, look into these communities and see how it feels. If it feels good to you, then stay. If it doesn't feel good to you, then leave. You know, there's no judgment there. It's all about you and your Kundalini awakening process, and, and and the help you can receive, and the and the assistance that you can give, it's very positive. Uh, we can also be reached on YouTube at uh, you just go Chris and Kundalini, and then on YouTube uh, you'll see about I don't know 270 some odd uh, videos, all about Kundalini and Kundalini awakening and the many, many, many different things that can happen uh, with a person inside of this amazing level of grace. It is an amazing level of grace. And, and yes, I know that there are some difficult areas with that, but uh, that's what we're doing here. We're trying to... I don't necessarily want to take the difficulty away from you, but I do want it to, to give understanding for you. So if the understanding of a process takes away some of the difficulty, I'm okay with that. And I would assume so are you. Um, at this point, uh, I believe uh, Amelia would like to say something. Hello. Um, it's good to be here. Um, hello, everybody. I would just like to say a few words for those of you who would like to send a donation to support Chrism in the work that he does. And I'm going to give you the address that you can go to to do that. It's www.ascension. Oh, can you hear me? Are you there? Yeah, but you're I am. Up. What's going on? Are you? Oh, nothing is going on from my point of view. One second. Okay, can you hear me now? Testing, testing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're coming through this time. Okay. So I was saying, I'll begin again. For those of you who would like to send a donation to support Prism and the work that he does, I'm about to give you the address that you can go to online to do that. 
and it's www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com. And in the upper right-hand corner, you'll see the donate button, and it's a very easy method to use. Um, alternatively, um, if you do not have a credit card or you wish to donate in a different way, you can do so directly into a bank. And if that would suit you better, then please feel free to write to me and I will give you the details on how to do that. My email address is kundalinimatters at gmail.com. So thank you for listening and, and for that. And it's good to be here. I'm back in Ireland again after my holiday in the Mediterranean. And um, it's good to be tuning in from home. Thanks, Chrism. I hope thank I'm coming you. across okay. That my voice you are is now. okay again. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you didn't break up once. And, and thank you. Thank you for saying that and uh, for the for uh, announcing the donations. Um, yeah. So let's let's go ahead and begin with this. Now, uh, to access the uh, the Kundalini Awakening Safeties, uh, you'll need to go to the uh, www.kundaliniawakeningsystems1.com. And remember, that's the number one, numeral one. And as you go, as you go to, these, to this area, uh, yeah, on the website, you'll see the safety guidelines for safe and choice activation. Okay, last week we talked uh, about uh, some of the, the the locks, like like tongue up, that completes the cranial uh, circuit and, and allows excess energy uh, to bleed uh, up and down the sides of the neck, and um, you know you're cultivating the position of the tip of the tongue resting on the fleshy mound right behind your upper front teeth. So we talked a bit about that. We talked about uh, having a tongue tip burn and all those things. We also talked about eyes up. Uh, this is the position of looking towards the brow points, the brow up points being where your third eye would, where you would think your third eye is. And that's, if you, if you see anybody that's of the Hindu faith, they'll have a red dot uh, typically, they're misplacing the red dot, but if they place the red dot about an inch and a half, uh, maybe just two fingers above the bridge of your brow, your 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 brow, your eyebrow there, uh, that is where your sixth chakra or your your third eye would be. And this is this is where I would like you to to I'd like you to look up and slightly in. And what you're doing is you're you're uh, you're activating the, uh, a triangle. A trinity of eyes forms a triangle on your face, and uh, the the two eyes on the base and the one eye up top, the third eye, form this triangle. And when you bring your eyes up and slightly in, you actuate that triangle, and that triangle will actually begin to develop within you, and you can feel this this bump begin to occur. Uh, where the third eye is. It's an inside-out bump, and so you can kind of feel it pushing itself outward uh, from inside the body, you know, up there uh, between the the eyebrows, about, you know, an inch uh, above the brow. And uh, you'll you'll actually feel it. Uh, you'll feel it more with your face than you'll feel with your fingers. You won't feel this, this bump start to occur so much with your fingers. I remember when it was happening to me in my... Uh, in my uh, experience, I kept feeling for this bump. It's like, wow, I know this is the third eye, but where is it? Come on, open up. And I don't want you to think <laughs> that it's in any way, shape, or form uh, like the other two eyes that you're talking about. And you'll see this in pictures. You'll see the third eye drawn, you know, like a, like a physical third eye, and it's just not. It is not like a physical third eye. It is a metaphysical third eye, but it is absolutely real. It is as real as the other two. It's just not set up for you to uh, for you to understand uh, what it is. The, the, the sixth chakra is a huge thing. It, uh, it's its own universe. And actually, one of these days, I, I will do a, a program just on the sixth chakra just to kind of give you an idea of the level of... Uh, of complexity that there. Uh, uh, Amelia Centara, 
I'm going to move you into the blue. Oh, I beg your... Sorry, sorry about that. You were right in the middle of responding, so my apology. I'll bring you back so you can continue your response. There you are, you're red. No, Chrism, I apologize. I had left my independent mute button off. That was just, sorry. Okay. Not quite sure what that was, but I'm going to go ahead and move you into the blue. Okay. So, as we as we uh, continue our exploration of the safeties, the eyes up I just discovered or just described to you. Uh, we're doing a brief uh, recap just for everybody to uh, kind of get on the same page, so to speak. Uh, fingers in position. Uh, this is the Gyan Mudra in the Sanskrit, and uh, this is the thumb tip and the forefinger tips joined, uh, pressed together. Now, remember, we're talking about the tips, not the pad, not the flat part of the upper finger, but the fingertip, uh, kind of like right maybe a few millimeters behind where the uh, where the fingernail is, okay? This is the finger lock, and so you can go ahead and begin that. Uh, so those are those are the, the locks. I also gave you a chin lock, and, and I'm using English with this. Yes, yes, there is a Hindi and a Sanskriti and a, you know, Punjabi and a, you know, uh, you know, there are many different... Uh, uh, descriptions for the same thing, but I'm assuming that many of us here speak English, and I would just assume hear it in English instead of trying to have to figure out the Sanskrit uh, terminologies for these things. So most of the time you'll hear me speak in English, even when I'm describing these things. And so, so now we also talked about water and how uh, as the kundalini rises, it will stimulate the, and activate the kidneys and the adrenal glands. The adrenals and kidneys can become hot, really hot, and feel as if they're expanding, and they are expanding, actually. The adrenals will release amounts of adrenochrome, which is also called uh, adrenaline. Uh, and this can be very disconcerting, and it can help you find a way to fear. So really, what is happening is that as the kundalini comes up, it actuates the uh, the adrenal glands, and the adrenal glands hyper-express levels of adrenaline into the bloodstream, which is the fight-or-flee hormone. And as that uh, races into your bloodstream, well, your heart rate goes up, your breathing is adjusted, and, you know, diaphragmatic controls and everything are, are switched into a panic mode, a fight-or-flee panic mode. And, and if there's nothing for you to fear, then you will create something for you to fear. Uh, because that that response is all about avoiding a predator or avoiding a, a life-threatening, fearful situation. And, and so you just need to know that. And when you know that, you know it's Kundalini doing this. You can just relax and, and enjoy. Enjoy this, this, this enervation, this, this energetic uh, uh, manipulation that the Kundalini is bringing you, and you can get a lot done. I'll leave it to you to decide what it is you want to get done. We discussed programming, TVs, movies, books, music, friends, family, church, Internet, newspapers. We talked about uh, reading and hearing from various sources the many negative fear-evoking forms of entertainment lately. You know, it's been this uh, chemical attack on Syria uh, or, or, or from Syria or whoever, you know, and, and the United States is positioning itself to to punish Syria for doing what the United States has also done. So it's kind of an interesting uh, conundrum that uh, this current administration has put itself into. Uh, yeah, you can just kind of like take that out of your scenario at this, at this point. Uh, all of these, uh, you know, fear stoking and, and, uh, and, and saber rattling and all of this stuff, uh, Pretty soon we're going to have to just figure out that we need to let people solve their own issues in their own way without, uh, you know, injecting our morality into a situation that uh, wasn't created by our morality. So, yeah, so you want to get away from these levels of communications, news, and, and whatever. It's, it's not helpful to you. It's not going to help you with your kundalini except as you can begin to forgive, uh, uh, you know, other countries and other populations for for the mistakes of their government administration, just like I have to forgive the United States government administration for the mistakes that they make. 
Uh, fear, excessive lust, hateful attitudes can be Hello, quite Hello, Chris, and may I interrupt you? Yes, of course. Hi, Chris. Marilyn has a question for you, and she's online now. Oh, stand by. Okay. Hi. Marilyn. Hi, Chris. It's a pleasure. It's an honor to talk to you. Um, I am currently going through the dark night of the soul. I had a a 17-year Kundalini awakening. And right now, and it's amazing that you mentioned this, my adrenal glands are just pumping more adrenaline in my body. I'm I'm in the constant fight-or-flight mode, and if something happens, I just freak out because I'm just... I just go above the fight. Well, you know, I'm, 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 I'm very glad that, that you called in then and you, and you mentioned because, you know, you represent the tip of the iceberg for the people that are going through Kundalini that may listen to this program. And so, so thank you. Thank you for calling in. And, and I will address this right now. Let me ask you some questions, if you, if you don't mind. Please. Do you drink? Do you drink coffee or anything caffeinated? No, I had to, I've, I've been, since this started, I've been unable to touch any caffeine. Good, good, good. That's excellent. Are you are you keeping yourself hydrated? Yes, because I now have dis, uh, a, a, dis, uh, a dysfunctional autonomic nervous system. I have to drink like 96 ounces of water a day just to keep myself balanced. It's strange that I got this medical condition that seems to match what you're describing as the kundalini, but medicine has a definition for what I'm going through as well, but yet you do too. It's Kundalini as well. I think it's a, a spiritual emergency is what they call it, isn't it? Well, medicine is calling it uh, dis- dysautonomia and uh, dysfunctional autonomic nervous system where I, I oh, can't I see, control. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, they go right into the Latin with it just to kind of keep everybody else out. Um, okay, so how is your sugar intake? What did you take? Sugar? Are you eating white oh, sugar? I, I don't. I had to cut out. I have chronic, serious chronic fatigue syndrome, uh, and I had to cut out sugar. Oh, good, 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 good. No, I'm just kind of going right through it. And you've had this for 17 years, and it's been continuous what? this way. So what's telling you? What years, telling me? I'm sorry. 17 well, years was the Kundalini. Now, for the past two and a half years, it's been the dark night. Oh, 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 I see. Okay, so you've been a, you've had the Kundalini for seventeen years, and now you've reached the dark night, right? For the past two and a half years, and now the adrenaline for the past six months is flowing, and I'm scared. Well, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. The Kundalini knows you better than your ego knows yourself. So realize that and trust the process that you're in. Now, are you taking medications that would increase your or change your metabolism at all? I do take a little bit of thyroid medication, which is very little. I, I can hardly tolerate any medication now in my system because I've been over-medicated in the past. Uh, are you are you showing up as deficient in your in your in your thyroid uh, hormone? A little bit, yeah, a little bit, just minor. So I'm uh, I'm on a very low dose of thyroid. So you're still within the parameters of, of thyroid health. I'm a little bit low, so I'm on I'm on a, a 50 milligram thyroid pill. Well, I just want you to know right off the bat that I'm not an MD, I'm not a doctor, and by law in the United States, I'm not allowed to prescribe or to to uh, you know advise people on medical conditions. Okay. Uh, with the Kundalini, I have often found that what the Kundalini will do is it will begin to modulate the systems of the body in order to to bring itself into a greater expression within the body but also uh it will it will change itself into different combinations and therefore change the body's functioning in different combinations that allow you the individual to experience specific things to have specific experiences that allow you to to lighten the karmic load. Okay. Now, typically this to will happen with people it. To, in, to lighten the, to lighten, the karmic to, load. Say, say again. I'm sorry. To 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 light to make it lighter. To decrease to make to it lighten less? the karmic load to 
to to have the karmic load less of a of a uh, uh, of a uh, of a burden. Burden. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. So the, the scenario is 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 you're going to need to really surrender into this, Marilyn. This is not something that medicine can help. No, they uh, told me they can't. That, yeah, they told me they really can't do anything for me. No, no, they can't do anything. And uh, and it's and and I and I you know I I tip my hat to them for their honesty because they can't do it and they shouldn't be able to do it. You have the Kundalini, and therefore the Kundalini is changing you and transforming you. And because it's taking you outside of the familiar zones of living and life that you have lived up to this point, it's causing you fear, and the fear is being uh, accentuated and amplified by the kundalini, which is in turn uh, giving you a, a, a an extreme uh, uh, adrenaline load in the bloodstream and, and your heart and your lungs and, and many of your muscles are also probably uh, responding to the adrenaline in that way. And so the scenario is, uh, Marilyn, I, I want you to... Stop resisting the kundalini. And you may think, well, I haven't been resisting it. I've had it 17 years, the last two years. Dark night of the soul. Well, I don't want you to resist the dark night of the soul either. The dark night of the soul is there is a very, very, very important part of the kundalini. And everybody gets it in a different way because everybody's karma is coming at them in a different way. And so... For you, Marilyn, I'm, I'm going to really strongly suggest that you embrace the Kundalini dark night for you. Remember, the dark night doesn't necessarily indicate evil or bad or difficult. It darkness is not uh, darkness does not have these qualities. Darkness is as beautiful and as good as sunlight. Okay, but they're both needed. You- just as you said, uh, Chris, because I just watched your video, it has isolated me Did you totally. That? I just watched your video on the dark night of the soul, Please. and just as you said, it has isolated me totally. And the silence, the lo- uh, the isolation is just frightening to me now. I didn't, I never used to mind being alone, but now I'm frightened of the emptiness. Of the emptiness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I want you to see the emptiness as a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing in and of itself. The emptiness is not anything to be afraid of. The, the other people call it the void. Uh, there is me- there there are how do, I, how do I phrase this? There is much consciousness inside the void. You you see the void or the emptiness as being alone. It's only alone because you're trying to discern it with five senses that are not designed. To 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 give you information from the void, okay? Your 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 Kundalini is is actually beginning your upgrades into this area. This is part of the transformation where where you are in the void. And actually, you go through a level of change uh, on in, in the physical. You know, the physical bodies change, the emotional bodies change, the mental bodies change, psychological and spiritual bodies are changed. Well, when that change reaches a certain point, well then, well, okay, it's time to put this change into action. And so you're giving, you're, you're being given void experiences, or experiences with the emptiness. Um, uh, Santara, am I coming through okay? Yes. I need to know if it's coming through the computers already. Right yes. Too. I know it's. Yes, you're you're coming through okay, Chris and, and Marilyn. So are you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Santar. So as these changes, these transformations have occurred for you over the past years, well, now it's time to put this to the test, okay? And so as you as you experience the void and the, the great aloneness, the great darkness, the great emptiness, give, give a communication to your kundalini within you. Ask it what it wants you to learn. Ask it what it wants you to do. Sometimes the whole idea is just to experience the void without reacting, without reacting in fear or or love or anything like that. Sometimes the void is just to be experienced 
as its own form of silent meditation. Okay? It's taking you outside of your familiar understandings and your familiar experiences. And so, of course, this will, this will you know, within the five-sense context, this can bring fear into you. And, and, and just because it's strange, well, you know what it is. And you know what's causing it, Marilyn. So there is nothing for you to fear. Your breathing friend, is helping. I'm sorry? But my friends and my family has just about disappeared. I'm all alone now. Well, that's good. Uh, you kind of have to, you kind of need to be alone with some of this kundalini material. The family does not, especially if the family doesn't accept or understand the kundalini. Those are the last people you want around you while you're having some of these kundalini symptoms because they just might dial 911 if they see you doing something that scares them. And off you go to the psych ward. So I'm glad, I'm happy to hear that you're, you're becoming more and more and more alone, and I hope it would be physically alone as well, is it? That's what I mean, yeah. Good, good. Excellent, excellent. Uh, you, you, and this, this isn't just for you, Marilyn, this is for everybody. You need to learn to be okay with being by yourself. You need to learn that, that you know, through the web of this world, and, and this is a different, I'm not talking about the Internet, I'm talking about the web of life on this world. Everybody is connected, and everybody, you can tie into that connection quite easily. It's not always the safest thing to do because people are going through many, 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 many difficult and different experiences of a karmic nature. Some of them are quite violent and negative, and, you know, some of them are quite joyous and beautiful. And so uh, until you're able to learn how to pick and choose what tie-in you want to have through the through, through the energetic web of, of uh, we'll just call it the metaphysic web, then, then you want to just kind of pull back from that. But I don't ever want you to think that you're alone. As much as the kundalini will try to place you in the void and give you uh, the feelings of being alone, just so that you can start to, to nurture yourself within that, within that understanding, that experience, the kundalini is always with you. So you're never alone. I don't want to come with you. One the one that is two. Hello? I don't think I want the Kundalini with me anymore. <laughs> well, uh, you know that the, the choice the choice for that has that you know that ship already left the dock. You have the Kundalini, <laughs> it has you. So so you know the other thing is you just want to really surrender to this. You want to be okay with this and you have to realize that your kundalini is what sent you to to kundalini awakening systems one at all. I mean, that's why you're even on the on the phone or computer or whatever you're commun- communicating through. Your your kundalini is guiding you right now. It took you to the YouTube so that you could learn about the dark night of the soul. So it is following you. It is with you. It is consciously helping you. And it doesn't come to you necessarily through words or phrases. Uh, Sometimes it'll just communicate through pictures. Sometimes it'll just communicate through feelings. And uh, this, you know, as as, as we're talking about the safeties, Marilyn, I would really like you to look at your programming. Okay. What do you see on TV if you watch TV? What do you see in the movies if you see movies? What do you read? What music do you listen to? What are your friends and family saying about what's happening to you? And how much are you buying into it? I'm alone. I don't watch, you know, and I, I don't even like to watch TV or, I, you know, anymore. And uh, family doesn't influence me anymore. I play my computer Scrabble and I look for Kundalini information on my iPad. Good for you. Good and, for you. Okay, now. Now, let me ask you, did you get Shakti Pot, or were, were, did this come on by yes, itself? Yes, I did. Get, I, I got Shakti Pot, but, but it was through an unconscious channel. He was a spiritual teacher, and he recognized me from another life. He had gotten rid of his ego, so the force was able to come through him. He wasn't even aware that he had awakened my kundalini. Um, but, boy, was it powerful, and it was just by the book. Uh, it just threw me into an incredible, for, for eight months of craziness, and then I started doing research because I'm a scientist, 
And I and then the last eight months uh, after 15 years of research, I ended up oh, writing wow. writing a book. There? Yes. Marilyn, are you still there? Hello. Yes. Yes, I'm here. You said the last eight months. I ended up writing a book that was divinely guided, um, connecting physics with metaphysics. And then, after I finished the book, the Kundalini left me, and as far as I knew, and it became the dark night. Well, no, 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 it doesn't leave you. It just changes its the way that it uh, interacts with your body. So your senses, you know, what what you what you what you were used to in communicating and feeling the communication communication has changed it, it doesn't leave you it's kind of like your spinal cord never leaves you right right, right? right. well your kundalini your kundalini which is inside your spinal cord never leaves you either but it, it will change it will change the way it communicates with you for instance right now for me I've had kundalini now 24 some odd years and it's very different for me right now than it was, you know, the first two or three years in my experience. Kundalini will will hopscotch around your body. And I, and that that was a terrible faux pas for me right there, folks in Europe and anywhere else in the world. Hopscotch is a way of just uh, uh, describing it will move all over the body. and But it will also change it the way it communicates with you through its effect on the body. Okay, so for you, Marilyn, I'm going to suggest that you strongly look at, first of all, you know, start doing your forgivenesses. If you haven't done that already, then I want you to really get into your forgivenesses. Forgive everyone. I've done done them. Continue to do them. Don't think that it's a one-time shot. Do as much as you can and let the kundalini kind of decide who comes up for forgiveness uh, over and over and over again, and let the, and then give that forgiveness to those people or that person. Uh, yeah, I see, look I see who's coming up. Of, good, good, good. Look at your level of fear. How much are you afraid of what is occurring? And, and the adrenaline, the, the adrenaline is making the fear worse. Are Are you walking around the house, Marilyn? No, right now I'm sitting. In bed, why are you sitting? Please, please sit in one place because your your phone call is is breaking up. I am okay. sitting in one place now. There I am sitting. Thank you. Thank you. So please be aware of your fear. There's no need for you to fear. Even if you see entities or whatever comes up, you always have Kundalini with you. It is always with you. It never leaves you. Yes, yes, the body acclimates and the, the kundalini will change and do this, this, or that with your body, but it never leaves your body. You have that divine connection, okay? And you'll always have it. You'll have it even beyond death, but I won't get into that. That's another show. Uh, look at your fear, and if you have any of the following, uh, excessive lust, hateful attitudes, uh, look at at your anger. Look at... Uh, your feelings of futility. I mean, what you have done, as as, uh, as you describe it to me, is you've gone to the MDs to take care of the symptoms that the Kundalini has been giving you, right? P- pardon me, we we say that, please. You you've gone to the MDs to the doctors to try to relieve oh. the symptoms that the Kundalini has brought. Yes, yes, I have. I want you to embrace those symptoms. If you're feeling a lack of energy, then let that let yourself just be restful. Let yourself go into meditation. If you're feeling an excess of energy, let that happen. Go out and hold the weeds or do whatever you do wherever you are. Go out, you know, use the energy. Just don't expect to be able to control it with your ego mind the way you used to. No, I can't. I have no energy left. I thought it was the chronic fatigue that was taking it away, except for the adrenaline well, chronic, rush. Which, chronic which, fatigue, I mean, you know, it's it's also, you know, adrenal burnout can do that too. But the scenario is with Kundalini is, is Kundalini infuses the adrenal. It's changing the actual...
actual tissue of the adrenal gland. It's changing the actual tissue in your kidneys and in your body. And so I, I, what I'm trying to, to get across to you is to go with these changes. Be okay with this. What frightens me in, what frightens me in your talk is that you said I, I may be facing the depths of hurt. My children are in trouble. You said the depths of of all these terrible things struggle. My finances aren't so great. I'm I'm I think I'm facing the depths of all these terrible things that you said you mentioned that I that I already thought of before you even mentioned them, but uh Okay, you broke up a little bit for me in there, and so I'm trying to. You said that I mentioned the depth of uh, the depth uh, of struggle, the depth of my, my children are facing terrible hardships. Um, you said the depth of, of of loneliness, of course, the depths of all the human. I'm going to have financial trouble, sickness, uh, the depths of of hurt. Uh, you said in the dark night you could be facing all these things and. In terms of where my what's happening with my kids, what's happening with my health, I, I feel and my financial security, I feel that I am facing the depths of all these struggles that you mentioned, all these human tragedies. Good, good, good. I, and I want you to face those. I want you to embrace them. Believe me, I know very, very, very well from direct, authentic, personal experience about the dark night of the soul, and I know how long it can last. I know the ramifications and I know the reverberations of the dark night of the soul, you know, through a lifetime. And I want you to embrace all of those things that you just listed to me. I want you to embrace your illness and give it to the Kundalini. I want you to embrace your concerns that you have about your kid and give it to the Kundalini. Okay? I want you to start getting rid of these concerns because you really have no control over what happens to your kids. I, know. I assume that they're they're adults now, and they can make their own choices and their own decisions, right? Right. Young adults. So you just love them? You just love yeah. them, and you let them, and you help them when you can, but you you, you got to love them and let them go do their own thing. You have to love yourself in the same way, and you have to love yourself to the degree that you can allow and trust the kundalini process in you to give to you what you need. And don't judge what the Kundalini brings to you as far as what it, what it sees that you need. It will see things that you need that you'll have no clue about. Accept it. Do not be afraid, but be accepting. Look at this and go, okay, all right, my Kundalini. I understand what it is you're bringing to me. I mean, I don't understand it, but I see it. I accept it. I trust this process. I am not going to try to mitigate or to control the symptoms that you bring to me through your transformation of my body. I'm going to accept it. And that would have to go with the, uh, with any of the, uh, uh, choosing my words carefully here, with any of the areas that you would go to for assistance. How do I, when does Hello? this end? How, how does this end? When does this end? How do you know it, it ends wait. slowly? It, it ends. It ends slow. Okay, now I'm not going to speak in an absolutist quality here. Everybody's different, and so the endings for everybody will also have differentiation. Uh, for me, it was a gradual feathering out of the dark night. So, so frankly, uh, you know, I started to get a communication from the Kundalini that I needed to to volunteer uh, my medical skills to people that were homeless. And and as, so as I began to to volunteer, uh, my services for the Catholic Charities Homeless Family Health Organization, where I'm living here, um, my D, my DNS or Dark Knight Soul uh, started to fade, and then it eventually faded out completely. Doesn't mean you don't have hard experiences after that. It just means that it's not such a collected tour de force of hard experiences that you're having, okay? But you have to accept the kundalini first. Part of the of, of the DNS, or the dark night soul, I call it a DNS, part of the DNS is, 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 uh, is your resistance to the strangeness of the symptoms that are coming. 
you know, you're not used to being tired all the time, or you're not used to being excited all the time. Depressed. We resist that. And then we'll we'll go to a, an association or an organization and say, oh, my gosh, I'm not feeling any energy or, or any of this type of thing, and, 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 oh, what can you do for me? And, and that organization will give you some sort of a chemical treatment. And I'm going to suggest to you that that chemical treatment is a form of resistance. The antidepressants, forget them? Yeah, yeah, well, like I said, they'll give you a a chemical uh, solution for them. That For them, they're hoping that that will work for you. Right. They don't know about Kundalini, so they don't recognize it, so therefore they don't know about it, so therefore they can't really uh, tie that in to their... To their uh, to their diagnosis of you, and believe me, no, not all doctors are this way. I mean, I have uh, I have uh, MD friends here in this town, directors of medical institutes that they understand Kundalini. Matter of fact, they're on the uh, the Yahoo group, and they don't post because that would be suicide to their career at this point. But they're reading and they're acknowledging, and you know, one of their comments to me, one of them came up and said, "Gosh, you know, do you think you're going a little fast with these folks?" He didn't know about the safeties. And, I, and once I explained to him about the safety, he says, oh, 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 I totally understand that. So I want you to understand, uh, I, I, I tell this to you because I want you to know that some doctors, some very, very, very good medical doctors uh, know about the Kundalini, and they may not know as much as they need to know about it, but they know enough uh, to to stop calling it a spiritual emergency or to stop calling it, a, you know, a sudden whatever the the, uh, the the DX was for you, Marilyn. So for you, Marilyn, I want you to really accept, happily accept, joyfully accept any and all of the phenomena that's coming your way. This will bring you, and of course, you know, this will be expanded also by the Kundalini. It likes the person to start really relating uh, it themselves through love with the kundalini symptoms that are coming. Love 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 is very 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 important in this process. It's not I would like you to look at love as a noun. You know, like love as a tree or love as a bicycle because in the kundalini context it really is. It is a discernible um it's a discernible phenomenon. But it seems I'm so isolated, Chrisom, that I can't well, you use are. my love. You, Who you do I love? <laughs> you love the Kundalini. You oh. are isolated, and you're isolated for a reason. You're not isolated just because it says, "Oh, well, we're we're going to make Marilyn alone now." We're not. Gonna, you know, it's not about that. You need to be isolated at this point. It's not that you've done anything wrong. It's just that something that is very, very right is happening to you, but it's not healthy all the time to have other people around while you're going through this. No, it's not. Okay? And so I want you to embrace your solitude. Embrace your solitude. Embrace your financial poverty. God knows I have. Not yours, but my own. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you know, I mean, think about it. I mean, I don't have any... You know, uh, not any. I, I don't have very much money, and yet, you know, all of a sudden, you know, Amelia Centaurus says, hey, let's do this block talk thing. And so the, the kundalini will find a way. Your kundalini will find a way, Marilyn, but you've got to stop blocking it with your fear. You have to stop blocking it with your, with your expectations of, of wanting things to be the way they've always been for you. Release the need for comfort. And I don't mean just, you know, physical pleasure comfort. I mean the comfort of having your familiar expectations always met every day, every night. It's not going to happen with the Kundalini. Certainly not at the stage that you're in. Okay. Uh, you're going to be given different things all the time. As a matter of fact, the, uh, I can tell you right now that that as you listen right now, Energy is, is going in to your spinal column, and your kundalini is actually being communicated with already. And it, I don't know, how do you feel right now? More relaxed than I felt for a while. But I think that's because I'm talking to you. Well, 
Yeah, it does. It does come through me in these ways. I have to admit, I I can't deny that. Uh, but I want you to accept it. Then I want you to to feel this relaxation and and realize that you have absolutely nothing to fear. The changes are going to occur whether you fear it or not. It's just if you fear it, the changes can be really, really horrible and have a you know a difficult outcome. Whereas if you if you stop resisting the changes. Well, you grow into that beautiful, 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 beautiful kundalini tree, helping others as you go. You know what I mean? I think so. And so, I wonder, I, have you been practicing? Have you been practicing the safeties? No, just uh, my my tongue is always um, on the my, the top behind my teeth, and I'm doing the finger thing, but that's all. Well, then I want you to do the chin lock, too. Do you meditate? You know, I I, I get intuition. Medi- I, I'm too much of an A personality. I try too hard, and then I lose the meditation, the the effect. But I, I just get, I used to get intuition all the time. Now, since the dark night, I don't seem to get quite so much intuition. Um, but I haven't been I think, meditating. I think, what kundal- I, I think what your kundalini is telling you, and this is what I'm getting right now, is that uh, it's no accident that you have Kundalini number one. You didn't accidentally go to that place and accidentally meet that guy who accidentally initiated your Kundalini awakening. This is not accidental. I know this that. This is the way that it, yeah, this is the way it had to happen for you. So this is totally on purpose. Not only from the Kundalini, but also from your higher self who set you up to have this body, to have this life, to have this experience. So it I is feel, I feel set good. up. I feel set up. <laughs> you feel set up? I feel, I feel set up. The way things happened, I feel like it was a set up. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And a good one, too. I'm, I'm, I would like to congratulate you on your setup. So the scenario is, is, is if you like... If you like what you saw on YouTube, and if you've watched any of the other videos, then I want you to really—I want to really encourage you to walk the talk of those videos. Take them in, and take it all in, and really walk the talk. Don't go off on the web and you know search out Kundalini awakening syndrome or Kundalini fear. Or, Kundalini, don't start buying into these negative propaganda about the Kundalini. Don't buy into it, Marilyn. Stick to what the Kundalini in you feels is appropriate for you. And if it's that YouTube channel, then you watch every one of those videos, whether it pertains to the dark night or not, and start ascertaining where it is you're blocking the Kundalini. And how? How are you blocking the Kundalini? Is it excess fear? Well, yes, I can see right now that excess fear is blocking your positive relationship with with the DNS. Okay, the fact that you don't meditate. Intuition and meditation are apples and oranges. Absolutely different. Okay, so when you sit down and do a stillness meditation, you know basically you breathe in through your nose, and as you breathe in, you say something like, "I am at one with the all that I am," and then you hold your breath, and as you hold your breath. You say, I am at one with all that I am. And then as you exhale through your through your nose, as you exhale, you're saying, I am at one with the all that I am. This is triangular breathing. Okay. Uh, do that and be at one with the all that you are, even if you don't know what the all that you are is. I'll tell you one thing. The all that you are right now is kundalini. You are a walking, talking fountain of light. And it's the it's the the container, your body and your ego that is complaining. So it's like, Well, I'm not sure I like the way this fountain of light is going and the Kundalini says, Well, your concerns are noted but not really taken in heavy consideration. I ha- I have <laughs> met I have met four <laughs> spiritual men that just recognized my light when I don't recognize my light, but they recognize right. my light immediately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a real thing, and, and it's necessary that you not recognize it the way they do because you're inside of the light, and there's still work for you to do. But the fact that they can see it 
should be a validation for you of what is occurring. It was. Did I lose it? No, it was, it was a validation, but also a fear because I don't know what's next. And I don't want you to know what's next. I want you to trust. I want you to trust and I want you to have faith in your process. And let me tell you, as I've said before for other people, when you're developing faith, you can't know the answers. Do you understand that? Yes. When you're developing faith and when you're working with faith or through faith, you can't know the answers. There would be no need to have faith then there, would there? There would be no need for that. So I want you to trust and I want you to have faith in this process. And I want you to open your arms and your heart and your mind wide open for whatever the Kundalini wants to bring to you. And I, will, I, Chrisom, will help you as much as you wish for me to help you. It may want to bring Just me sickness we're... and poverty. <laughs> During sickness and poverty, that's right, that's right. And, and uh, yeah, well acquainted with both of those. I, that's what, I though, think that's what it wants to bring me. <laughs> my my kundalini didn't really make me sick. At least I never, it made me homeless and it made me extremely poor, but I needed that too to develop uh, my compassion and to develop uh, uh, the lack of attachment to having things go the way I always wanted them to go. And I'll suggest that maybe a little of that is happening for you as well right now. Yes, the compassion is definitely developing. Yeah, yeah. And the more you express that compassion through helpful assistance to other people, the easier and more loving and pleasurable your DNS is going to be, your dark night soul is going to be. There's uh, not too many other people around. I'm, I'm going to ask Amelia. Dearest yes, Amelia, are you, Hi, are you can awake? Can you hear me? Yeah. I'm awake. Have I been, you just, <laughs> Uh, tell Marilyn a little bit about uh, your DNS experiences. Let's hear from a woman. Okay, well, as, uh, as I was Marilyn. listening, as I was listening to you both and um, to the conversation, I was thinking of my own experience, indeed, and the emptiness. You know, that void used to terrify me, Marilyn, too, and um, because. I thought it was this all, and it was up to a point, this all-embracing emptiness. But when I began to surrender into it, when I began to trust what the Kundalini was doing, it was like as if the Kundalini moved me into that place, in inverted commas, where the Kundalini had me for itself, where I commute, like there was no input from other people. There was nothing that could happen there from a high sense point of view. And when I began to really surrender and trust, and um, things really began to change for me. Um, and it's what Chrisman says, it's an embracing. And um, the adrenaline that you speak about, I was very familiar with that as well. The adrenaline, I began to see it as, <laughs> this might sound weird, <laughs> I began to see it as an opportunity to surrender to the Kundalini because the adrenaline can begin a horrific cycle. And so when I began to, you know, um, stop resisting and to move into that emptiness and be there with my Kundalini, I began to see that when the adrenaline started, I could also surrender that. And so it was an opportunity and as the heart started to beat, as I could feel, you know, the panic, for the want of another word, when I could feel my throat dry up, when I could feel the, you know, the, <laughs> the emptiness, I would use that as a way of saying to the Kundalini, I allow this to happen without resistance. I give this to you. And that began to change that began to change as well. It's very hard to put words on, you know. Amelia, there? Feeling. Yeah, can you hear me? Hello? Well, I, you know, I think oh. she's having a, a, a connection I, issue right now. I uh, can hear her. Marilyn, I can hear her. 
Yeah, you can hear me, Marilyn? Okay. I can hear Sometimes, you. Sometimes, Prism, you're fading out more than Marilyn. Um, I've heard Marilyn very strongly, but you're the one that's fading in and out. So I don't know what we're sounding like on air. But can you hear me, Marilyn? Yeah, yes, I can. Thank you. Okay. So anyway, uh, so that's... Well, hang on. I hang on a minute. Hang, hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Uh, Madhava Sadhvi and Bruno or, or, or Brandon, are you hearing this? Is this coming through okay? Can you give us a little bit of a sound check? Basti, hello, Basti. Yes, uh, uh, Madhava Sadhvi is saying she hears us all right. Bruno says we are yes. hearing, we can hear. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, well, see, uh, Marilyn, Almost everyone, and I mean almost because I don't want to speak in an absolutist way, almost everyone goes through the uh, the DNS, the Dark Knight. So thank you. Oh, by the way, thank you, Brandon, Bruno, and Madhav Asadvi for your such. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's, that's great. <laughs> Can I just so, say one oh, more thing? Okay. Oh, Mar- yeah, Marilyn Sterling. Okay. So the scenario is, is that, we will all come in to a DNS uh, that is suitable to us. Doesn't mean it's going to be easy. Certainly won't be easy. That's what I mean by suitable to us. So let's just say that a person has this extreme phobia of spiders. Okay. And uh, you know, I'm not out. I'm not. I'll pet a honeybee. I'll pick up a snake. But I, I have a harder time petting a spider. Although I have pet spiders. I tried. I mean. I mean, pet them with my finger, you know, not, I don't have pet spiders, you know, I don't keep them as pets. Oh, my God. Anyway, so so the scenario is, if a person has a spider phobia and the the kundalini is is riding up a a dark night soul for that person, well, spiders are going to be involved. My kids are going to say... My kids are going to fail. I know they're going to fail. That's what I'm afraid of, and they're going to fail. Your kids are going to fail? Yes, I'm, that's what I'm afraid of, and I know that's what's going to happen. So just give that concern over to the Kundalini, because that's really not your concern. Except for you being a loving mother, uh, give this to the Kundalini, and, and say a prayer, you know, for your kids to help. I mean, you're K-active. I mean, your prayers, you know, there's a... There's a certain amount of power that you have to your prayers now. The more you listen and, and converse and, and uh, mingle with your kundalini without uh, fear, without blockage, with total acceptance. I mean, and I, yeah, total acceptance. Well, you know, as close as you can get to that, uh, the better things are going to be for you. If you can find a teacher that you like. Talk with Oh, I wish. And it, Would you want to come to Arizona? I've been to Arizona many times. <laughs> Tucson, t- 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 not Phoenix, Tucson. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've given a, uh, one seminar in Phoenix and in uh, Tucson. I'd love to go to Tucson. Matter of fact, I like uh, I like that little town of St. David that's a little southeast of, of Tucson. But anyway... Um, yeah, you can find a teacher, uh, not one that's face-to-face, unless you know that that person has authentically gone through the kundalini and you can kind of compare your results with their results, then then you can be comfortable knowing that they, they understand they're just not, you know, they're not talking the talk, they're walking the talk. You know what I mean? How do I find a teacher? Well, you I've tried in Arizona. Find- let your kundalini find him for you or her for you. The scenario is, is is you may have found a teacher already and just don't even know it. Once again, our expectations of how a thing should be gets in the way of our acceptance of how things are. Everyone, I want you to listen to that, please. Our expectations of how we think things should be get in the way and block our expect our, our our acceptance of how things are. I 
it's a very important lesson to learn. I mean, if this was all I said in this whole two hours, then I'm happy to say that. Uh, Marilyn, I will suggest that you get your 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 expected idea of how you find a teacher and how you interact with a teacher. Let that go. And let Kundalini help you realize the teacher that is already with you. Well, Kundalini found me, um, this lady, Bonnie Greenwell, who wrote a book about Kundalini Awakening, and I was going to, she wanted to, to, uh, but she was more into the Kundalini than the Dark Night of the Soul, and I wasn't sure that I should pay the money to have her phone conversations, but if I can't talk to you, maybe I will. Have you heard of Bonnie, Bonnie Greenwell? Well, I, 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 like, I like Bonnie's book. I read her book, kind of scientifically oriented, which I think, you know, is, is, is helpful for a lot of people that are, you know, that are really glued into science. Um, I'm a scientist. Well, there you go. There you go. Uh, so so I, I don't know that Bonnie has much experience with a DNS. Uh, Neither she did I. She yeah, she doesn't write about it too much. Uh, yeah, I, I liked her book. I forget what she called it, but I liked her book. Um, I found it to be very helpful and well written too. I like the way she writes. So Bonnie Greenwell is fine, but I'm going to suggest that you don't need Bonnie Greenwell at this point. Although many, you know, once again to everybody listening, I think Bonnie Greenwell uh, has done a huge service to people with the Kundalini. Huge service. So, but I came to that I, same I, conclusion I, that I, I knew I what she knew I, already. I I tip my hat to Bonnie Greenwell. What's that? I'm sorry? <laughs> I, I felt I knew what she knew already. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, I, I, could, I could see that. I could see that. Yeah, thank you, Fashti. Thank you. Energies of Transformation by Bonnie Greenwell. Thank you, Fashti. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so look at how you're receiving the information that the Kundalini is giving to you and how you're, you may be blocking that through expecting it to come in a certain way. I'm going to suggest that you you get rid of those expectations and let Kundalini come to you the way it wants to come to you. Okay? Well, I've I've given up on the teacher. I I have no expectations. I've, I've given up on it, really. Well, you actually, you haven't. You haven't yet. Or because I wouldn't first have called of all, you. You're speaking to a teacher, number one. <laughs> a <laughs> number miracle. Two, I... Number two, you wrote me privately earlier this morning, folks. i got to come clean on this. Uh, Marilyn <laughs> wrote me an email earlier today uh, talking about her her Dark Knight soul. And, and uh, Marilyn, can I wrote to them? Or can I, yeah. Can I help? Yeah, okay. Let, yeah. Me, let me find that here. I, gotta go I can't believe you got it. Are you the M P I N H E Y at AOL? Yes. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to read that. And I said, "Hello, Marilyn." Uh, let's see. Her her email to me was this: "Hi, Chris. I just learned about you recently. Went through a major Kundalini awakening 20 years ago. Remained in an altered state of consciousness for the following 17 years, where I wrote a divinely inspired book about the evolution of the personality." and how physics unites with metaphysics, which I think it sounds like a great book, uh, Marilyn. Uh, before I could get it published, I entered a very deep, dark night of the soul where I remain today. Uh, loved your YouTube videos. I don't know how long this night will last, but truthfully, I haven't totally gotten rid of my ego or my fears yet. It is a, a private matter, as I suspect, or will it benefit me to get in touch with others who are or having uh, experienced uh, similar. Thank you, Marilyn. And and uh, my response was this. Try to get up here. Uh, hello, Marilyn. Some aspects are private, yes, and those areas can be balanced through your own personal levels of forgiveness and trust in your process. For the many other levels, it is good to have a community to interact with. People who also have the Kundalini in the many and varied ways that this will occur can and do help each other. Just the mere presence and the actions of grace through uh, the assistance a person can give or receive can help to encourage the inner dawn of that dark night. 
so I will invite you to come into the sunshine of community. And, and, and I mean this for everyone, not just for Maryland. I mean this for everybody. It's time to get into a, a Kundalini community that you're comfortable with. Uh, if you like Facebook, we've got plenty of them on Facebook. If you, if you like Yahoo, we've got them on Yahoo. Uh, I'll, I'll try to get them on Google Groups, too. I used to have one on Google, but I think they may have, they may have changed that. We're also on that, that Google thing. Uh, Amelia, what do they call that? It's, Is it Google it's, uh, stuff? It's, yeah, that one, that one. Thank you. Yeah, Google Plus. I think it's yeah. Google what? I don't. I do. I do post on that, by the way. So if anybody is using Google Plus, we have a group. Uh, we have a, what they call a community on on Google Plus. So go there. I mean, I think the Kundalini has already found you a teacher, but I I hesitate to 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 say that in in a way that is self-aggrandizing. Okay. I think the Kundalini found your teacher back when you were looking at the at the uh, YouTube uh, videos. I'd love you to be my teacher. Well, then, that's all you had to say. That's all you had to say. <laughs> Thank you. So there you go. Found a teacher. And what I'm going to tell you, and my first lesson to you and to anybody else <laughs> who might be listening, uh, is to is to the first thing you need to do is to challenge that fear. And in your case, challenge the fear of being in the emptiness. Wrap that emptiness around you like a blanket. Let that emptiness introduce you to the stillness within, to the beautiful, deep, dark, cool pools of enlightenment that are waiting for you to swim. It's like it's like what I go through. Um, I'll tell you a story about myself here. Nobody, well, some of my close students know. Um, when I was a younger person, I was surfing off the the, the coast of California uh, near uh, Santa Barbara, and uh, you know it was kind of a it was kind of an okay day for the waves. You know, you're out there and you're just waiting, you know. And all of a sudden, I started feeling really, really bad. For no reason, for no reason. I'm out there on my surfboard. I'm in my wetsuit. I've got my leash tied around my ankle. I'm ready to ride that wave. And I'm out there and I'm going, this is really, really nasty. Why am I feeling this way? And it got so bad, I turned around and I looked towards the shore and I saw people waving at me from the cliff. And so I waved back and I was just wondering, what the heck is going on? Why do I feel so horrible? And I said, I, I finally, you know, I stayed out a little bit longer, and I finally just paddled in. And as soon as I got to the shore, people ran down and said, we we're trying to wave you in because there was a huge fish swimming around you. And I thought, well, mm-hmm. there goes my surfing career. <laughs> <laughs> but ever since, you know, not ever since, but when, when I would swim in other areas, you know, I'm always, you know, aware of that now. I'm always aware of my place in the food chain when I'm swimming in the ocean or in, in lakes. And I, I've accepted that. I've accepted that. So I can swim in the ocean. I can swim in the ocean. I look. I, I, you know, it's like you're, you're, you know, you're stopping a stop sign. Stop looking, listen, right? Well, I'll stop looking, listen, and I'll stop looking, listen, and I'll look 360. Okay, but it, I don't fear it so much anymore. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to suggest that you do that with yourself too. If you're feeling that fear, that terrible, terrible em- em- emptiness, I want you to embrace that emptiness. I want you to let your kids fail. If they need to fail, then they need to learn from that failure. And I know so they do. I. I, I knew they do. I know they do. They're both okay. codependent, and I know they need to learn. And I'm and I've go. been scared. And I've been scared of 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 their lesson. I've been scared of it. Well, it's it, it's not your lesson to fear. It's theirs. So there's another blockage that you can take right out of your of your equation. Okay. 
Now, Marilyn, I'm going to invite you to to any of the communities that you want to join, or to just uh, correspond with me privately on email. Okay? You have my number, uh, or you have my you have my uh, my uh, email address. And for those of you that don't have the email address, uh, it's K as in Kundalini, Fire as in you know if you touch fire you get burned. So K Fire for F O R all A L L K Fire for all at yahoo.com. And for those of you on the Yahoo groups, Yahoo right now is going through this weird, weird enforced change, and it's causing a lot of problems with accessing the Yahoo group page. So for those of you that are in the Yahoo group, uh, I will suggest that you answer from your email. It's a little bit easier. It's a lot easier, actually. They've changed the website around. They've changed the picture. They've changed everything, and it's just... It's just a real mess at the moment. And, uh, yeah, so so there's that for the Yahoo group. Great, great. Answering Thank from you. your email. I'm sorry? Thank you so much. You're very, your very, email. very welcome. Very, uh, Marilyn. Thank you for having the, the courage and, 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 and the temerity to come up and, and uh, talk to, to all the people, too. Uh, your questions help many, and so thank you for asking. I've been scared to death. That's been, the fear has been the motivator. <laughs> You're See, welcome. The, the fear has caused you to do things that 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 are outside of your expectations, and and the positivity is already being experienced by you. Nicely done. Nicely done, Marilyn. Thank you. I didn't do All right. anything. But thank uh, you. I am going to continue on. And I'm going to put you on hold, but I want you to still listen to the show, okay? All right, there we go. Uh, and thank you, uh, Amelia, for your for your help and presence here. So as we continue through the safeties, um, I think it's really important. Uh, uh, let me let me backtrack a little bit. Uh, Marilyn called up about a DNS, a Dark Knight Soul, at a time when I was going to give the second half of the safeties. And I want you to know that as you practice the safeties, uh, the kundalini may bring up some of those fearful, hurtful, anger-oriented things for you to to ground. And that's one of the things that I forgot to tell Marilyn, and I'll tell her right now. Marilyn, there's there is a uh, there is a YouTube video on grounding, and, it, and I and I filmed it in front of a giant uh, redwood sequoia tree. And I would like you and anybody else that's listening to go to the YouTube uh, uh, site, and that's uh, chrisum.kundalini at YouTube, and uh, find the grounding video. Watch that video. Marilyn, it will be amazingly helpful for you to ground your body, to learn how to ground your body, to walk barefoot on your bare soil, even there in Arizona. Just don't step on a scorpion or a Gila monster, or an Arizona coral snake, or a sun spider. Uh, and let me tell you, I mean, as Amelia will, will, will tell you, I mean, we have gone stem to stern almost with, with Arizona. So Arizona is a very, very good place for Kundalini. It's a very good place for it. But I want you to go out and be natural in, in nature, if you can, without being seen. Absolutely, without being seen, because in this country it's a it's a very it's a, it's a crime to go with it to go natural in nature. Uh, sit next to a tree, you know, stand next to a saguaro cactus, feel that saguaro cactus between the needles, and and just resonate with the stillness that that saguaro can give to you. Resonate with the stillness that the desert can give to you. The desert is a beautiful, amazing place to have a kundalini awakening. And, 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 and there are many people, actually, in your area that, that have the kundalini and that have gone to seminars, and some, some that, that even know about me, you know, poor souls. So definitely ground yourself uh, constantly, constantly envision. And I'll give everybody a grounding technique right now that I'm not sure I cover in that video. Uh, envision an, uh, a, a, a big, thick 
rope that extends from the tip of your tailbone down to the center of the earth and, and see that rope begin to branch out like it has roots and let those roots go really, 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 really deep all the way to the center. And then when you're feeling fear or you're feeling anger or you're feeling something that, that perhaps you're feeling isn't necessary for you to feel anymore, like expectations, send those expectations down that grounding cord. Send it into the earth and let the earth use that energy the way she wants to use it. You don't need it right now. The earth does. So you send that through that that vision of the rope from your tailbone to the center of the earth, and it's movable. I mean, so you don't have to stand there thinking, "Oh my gosh, if I step one way or this way, then the, then the, then I've broken that rope." No, no, no. It's movable. It'll go with you anywhere you go in a car, in a plane, anywhere. It just extends its length. Do this as much as you can, and you will find your kundalini will enjoy it. And it will be part of that cleanup that, that all of us need to go through when we get the Kundalini. We have to clean up our lives. We have to clean up our fear. We have to clean up our expectation. We have to clean up our rage, our anger, our, you know, whatever it may be for the person. And this ties right in with, with our, our continuing uh, review of the Kundalini Awakening Safeties. I've got to check on my time here. looks like I have 43 minutes left. Okay, here we go. Um, food choices, I think I may have mentioned that last time, but I'll go ahead and, and uh, pay attention to the new tastes and the desires your body begins to have. And so if all of a sudden you're going, oh, God, I've I got to have watermelon, but, but it's so expensive. Well, I'm going to suggest that if you can, if you have the money, Get the watermelon. Get it and eat it. This is what your kundalini wants. Uh, the kundalini wants you to eat that watermelon, so eat it. If you can find it organic or grow it yourself, if you're living in a sunshine state like California, Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, uh, Florida, you know, any of, the, any of the Gulf states, grow your own watermelon and eat that watermelon. Really, I mean, that is what it wants. But let your kundalini choose your food for you. Yes, I do remember mentioning this last time. So I'm going to go ahead and just gloss on through that. Forgiveness, make sure you do the forgivenesses daily. Even if you've done them, do them again. Get used to doing them. Enjoy forgiving people. Enjoy forgiving yourself. Realize that, that, that we're all people on this world. We're all trying to our best to find our way. And if Kundalini has found you, then you have kind of an extra step on people. Not, not, no, that, I phrased that wrong. You have, you have a, you have a light that others have not uh, awakened to yet. So shine that light. Marilyn was saying how the people just want to come to her. You know, four men have come up to her and they see her light. They'll see your light, too. And so you, you respond in a kind way. Not necessarily, you know, I mean, you know, these guys, well, and I should say that most people who recognize or can feel or see the light of an, uh, of an awakened individual will respond in a sexual way. They'll, they'll want to have a relationship or they'll want to sleep with that person or whatever. And I would suggest don't, you don't necessarily need to do that. Okay. There are some... There are some systems where you absolutely do need to do that. And I know those systems very well. But just in general, unless, you know, just to, to, to work with your own kundalini, you don't need to sleep with them. You don't need to fall in love with them. You don't need to do that. What you need to do is shine that light and let them partake of that light uh, through a handshake or maybe just from a distance, just from seeing you. Okay? You don't have to have a relationship uh, with everybody that you see of a, of a kundalini nature simply because that is the accepted expectation. You see, in our, in our normal, shall we say, mating uh, sequences as a human being, kundalini is part of that sexual expression. And so you will recognize the kundalini as 
being part of that expression when you have it come up and, and awaken in the spine. But you'll remember it's like, oh, gosh, you know, there's this. And so, and so they will feel that from you. And you might even feel that from them. You may feel because of your telepathy, you know, that narrow band telepathy, you'll be able to feel what they're feeling or, or thinking. And so I'm suggesting that you don't need to respond in a sexual way. Unless, of course, you want to. And then if you want to, that's a completely different deal. But the, the thing you want to do is to realize that Kundalini is causing this. It's not your sexual libido that is causing this. Who's in, Kundalini causes the libido, which initiates a, a, a chain of, of thoughts and expectations because of how we... Uh, have expressed in a libidinous way on this world. But now you step over that. You no longer follow that chain of expectation and you go further into the, into the, the grace of the Kundalini and you'll find that, that, uh, libido is just an aspect of Kundalini. It's not the, the big total, uh, equation of Kundalini. So please understand that. And uh, please continue to do your forgivenesses. And as another ex uh, another expression of forgiveness is the recapitulation. Because we have been trained since we were little kids to write to to write down on a paper words. Uh, our our ego is very connected to what it is we write. Our mental mind is very connected to what it is we write. So when you write out, oh, I forgive Prism for for, uh, you know, being such a terrible teacher. I forgive Chris for that. So I write down, I forgive Chris for being this thing. And then, if, you're, if, you know, if you really have a lot of heat or anger at that Chris person, then I want you to write it backwards. Chris, forgive I. You know, if you're just saying, I forgive Prism, Prism forgive I. Okay? And then you write it backwards. And then you go through your whole list of people. Do about ten. If you can do ten, if you can't do ten, do five. But do them over and over and over until your Kundalini says it's enough. And you'll just get a feeling. You won't even remember to put them down. You'll start putting new names down. Okay? So this is called a recapitulation. And recapitulate all people who have done harm to you and all people whom you have harmed. You know, forgive yourself too. Think back on your life experiences and for the moment pick out the highlight of hurts that have been inflicted upon you by others. Okay? And now pick out some of the highlights of hurts that you have inflicted on others and forgive yourself. Consciously forgive them and yourself. And this goes a long way. Because even though there may still be karmic repercussions, this will go a long way towards ameliorating them. And so practice this daily. And as I mentioned before, new re remembrances will come to mind, and, uh, and they'll get in line for forgiveness. And this requires an honest acknowledgement of activity from both the receiving and of the inflicting aspects of our experiences with others. So be very, very honest with yourself. And honesty is another ingredient that you must practice and attain in order for this to work, regardless of where the blame is. I don't care about the blame. I care about the forgiveness. That's all that matters to me. And I will hope that eventually that's all that will matter for you. Okay. And for optimal results, this must be done daily and constantly throughout your conscious period. Now, I'm not saying with this, and you can kind of get that from the writing if you took it literally. Uh, I don't want you to think about this 24-7. I want you to do it, and then I want you to release your thoughts. But in your interactions with others, I want your forgiveness to be out front. If you're constantly in a forgiveness mode, nobody and nothing can ever hurt you. Think about that. And this moves, in, moves us into inner joy. Uh, and so if you're in a DNS or you're in a, in a, in a hurtful experience and uh, you're in a situation that you find yourself in very unfamiliar territory like, like the DNS, the first impulse is to go into fear. 
And I'm going to suggest you begin to cultivate a memory of when you have been joyous, exuberantly joyous, the, 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 the birth of your first child, the, uh, you win the jackpot, uh, you know, you, you, yeah, any, anything that you find joyful, I want you to bring that to your mind. And I would have you practice this during the day. So one, one time each day, I want you to visit your inner joy, whatever that may be. I remember uh, earlier in my process, I did, I, I did win a jackpot. <laughs> I can't couldn't believe it. And, uh, it was so, it was so, uh, unusual for me that I, you know, I literally had to stare at it for a while. It wasn't a huge amount, but it was, you know, significant to me that I had hardly any. So, you know, you can remember that. You can remember, you know, your cat or your dog or your bird or your, you know, anything that brings you joy. I want you to think of it. Uh, get a little sticky from, uh, you know, those little stickies that you write on it and write out your inner joy uh, on that sticky and then put it in your car, put it in your bathroom, put it on your refrigerator, put it in your room. Get real familiar with it. Don't just forget these beautiful, beautiful experiences. And then as you experience that situation where you can go into fear, the next, very next thought I want you to have is of your inner joy. Matter of fact, if you can think of a joke, I want you to laugh. I want you to be amused. It's very hard to be fearful and amused at the same time. And you'll notice that some people, when they go into fear, they automatically start to laugh. And that's the body's, the, 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 the conscious mind is going, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that if I laugh here, I won't go into as much fear here. So be as amused as you can. Let that also be an attendant or, or, or an addendum to your inner joy. And this brings us to trust. I checked my time here. I got a little bit like half an hour. Uh, um, Amelia, you will you will let me know if anybody has any questions, right? Because I'm I'm going to go to the uh, to a different page. Okay. Yes, I wouldn't do, Chris. Thank you, my dear. Thank you very much. Let's go into trust. This is what I was telling uh, Marilyn. Trust the process that is happening to you. You know already that it's Kundalini. Okay, you already know that, and you. I want you to know and understand that God, however you phrase God to be, God is part of this whole thing. You are being touched by God by even having the kundalini. And divinity is watching everything that you do. You are safe in the arms of your divine nature as long as you practice the love and forgiveness and the respect that are part of what is, that, that we teach. If you stray into areas of negativity willfully, you know, you do it on purpose, uh, then you're going to experience the fruits of those, of those intentions. So trust the Kundalini. It has your best interests at heart and as part of its agenda or you would not have been even allowed to activate it or to know about these safety protocols. Trust your Kundalini more than you trust anything else. Don't listen to me. Listen to your kundalini. And if your kundalini is telling you to listen to me, then listen to me. And trust this process. Have faith in this process. And as I mentioned to Marilyn, when you're working with faith, you can't know the answers. You must not know the answers. That is when you can have faith in the process. Which brings us to honesty. As you feel the energy work its way within you, be honest with yourself about what is happening. Watch out for that little voice denying it. You know, if you start uh, noticing that, that uh, you're, you're, you're going into denial, uh, you can miss information that the Kundalini is trying to impart to you. So be aware of how you're honestly feeling and watch out for that denial. Watch yourself closely without becoming, you know, overly obsessed. When you feel sensations of a presence or object traveling inside your spine, don't, you know, chalk it up to a sore back or that last tennis, tennis match or the tight clothing, unless, of course, you know, that is the cause of it. 
be clear and honest and see if it fits the descriptions of what you have learned here. And if you have questions, go on, you know, ask me. Ask me the question. Don't be afraid to write kfireforall at yahoo.com and ask the question. I may not answer it the way you want, but I'll definitely give you an answer. Okay? All right. Which brings us to really the the most powerful portion of the safeties, and that is love. Actively love what is happening. Choose to love what is happening. Express this, express this act of love by being actively forgiving and interested in being of service to others. You're not given this bright light so that you can go hide in your closet with it. You're not given this bright light so that you can keep it to yourself. You're given this enlightenment to help others with in the many different ways that we do. I'm not saying you you do what, uh, what I'm doing. I'm saying you do what you do. And you know what you do. And you know how you interact with people. And interact with people in the way that your kundalini amplified love allows you to. And you'll notice, as Marilyn said, people just come to her. Well, people will just come to you. Animals will just come to you because of that bright light. And that bright light is emanating love, too. It's not just a visual thing. It's an emotional thing. That light is full of love. And those people recognize it, only, but they only recognize you know, a small portion of that frequency. But they recognize it. And the little babies recognize it. And, the, you know, the, the, the people with, uh, you know, you know that... that uh, that are on the fringes of society will notice that those people who have, uh, you know, say a form of, uh, of uh, a mental challenge, whatever that may be, uh, they will notice it. They'll stare at the top of your head. You'll see them. They're not looking at your eyes. They're looking at the top of your head. And actually slightly above because that's where the, the, the halo can be seen. And it's the halo that they're seeing. That's the halo. You have a halo. When you have Kundalini awake in, in you, you get to have a halo. So, hello, hello. <laughs> Sorry about that. So, anyway, express, this, express the act of love by being actively forgiving and interested in being of service to others, but not in a slavish or demeaning way, in a confident and strength-based loving way. Help that kid or senior citizen or or, or, or animal, fellow mortal, uh, with, you know, help them if you can, uh, without endangering yourself preferably. This allows the Kundalini to activate your systems much cleaner and more quickly, i.e., it is going through you and into others. I mean, you're becoming this conduit of Kundalini, this, this, this lighthouse of Kundalini. And I know it sounds hokey. I really, I know. You know, everybody says, oh, love this, love that. You know, but it's true. It, it does work. Love is the strongest quality that we have. And just as the negative can turn around and bite you, so does the love turn around and embrace and kiss you even faster. So love, love causes the energy to move rapidly. And as you practice this quality, you'll find, you will find that negativity just doesn't seem to come your way as much. And then almost never, service to others or for others is an essential practice for the Kundalini. Other people who have activated without, you know, the teachings of the safeties here have and are suffering terribly, and my heart goes out to them. They will learn, though. They will learn in their own good or bad time. They will learn what you are learning right now, where your Kundalini has brought you to this blog talk radio show. Your Kundalini has brought you here now, so you're, it wants you to learn this now. This is one of the best safeties you can practice because, as I mentioned before, you are being observed by divinity, really. And those who are observing will they have ultimate control over who you are, how you are, okay, and as you go through this process, there's a level of protection that has been placed around you 
for the purpose of giving you the opportunity to take this evolutionary step that we're calling Kundalini. And as you practice love and you communicate love, love will will assuredly be given by this source to help you on this path. And as they do this, as you as you remember your thank yous and your gratitude, gratitude is a big deal too. So be grateful for the ideas and practice gratitude. I've got it starred here on the uh, safeties list. You know, there's a star right next to it. It's its own chapter because it is so important. Be grateful for the ideas and thoughts and wisdoms that begin to flow into your mind. Be grateful for the Kundalini as it is bringing you to a, a, a new and greater understanding of the all that is. Be grateful to your family and friends and perfect strangers for what they bring to your life and the opportunities that come your way from the Kundalini. Say to yourself in your mind and your heart that you're grateful for these gifts. So let me phrase it for you folks. Um... I won the jackpot. First thing I say is, thank you, my kundalini. Okay? Somebody cuts me off, and I'm not in an accident, and I say, thank you, kundalini. (laughs) You know, I I made a long trip all the way across the nation, the United States, you know, and, and, and it was a good trip, and I say, thank you, my kundalini. So thank the kundalini. Let it be who you are and how you are and what you are. This is why you're even having it. Say to yourself in your mind and heart that you are grateful for the gifts that Kundalini brings and even greater ones will come your way. This is the nature of the path you are walking. Diligence, integrity, love and gratitude are richly rewarded. Which brings us to prayer. Okay, now prayer. I was not raised religious. Kristen was not raised religious. My mom, bless her heart, a single mother uh, with four kids, and she's, you know, Easter and Christmas would come around, and she'd send us off to church to learn how to to learn manners or to, you know, how to <laughs> – she taught us manners at home. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> she, would, she had us go to church on these days so that we would be familiar with what – culturally is expected of a person inside of a of a place of worship or a, or a, a church or something like that. So every Christmas and Easter, we'd have to go there. And even though, you know, we're, we were perfectly happy with Santa Claus, uh, we, we got the other aspects of, of, of Christmas and Easter, too. And so it was just fun. Uh, but we didn't practice prayer. I mean, I remember a few times on those wonderful days of uh, Christmas and Easter, we'd sit around the table and I think one of my sisters would say, okay, who's going to say grace? And we're like, I'm going, well, I'm not going to say grace. Because I didn't know anything about it. And uh, I wasn't really interested. So I can understand if you feel the same way. And yet, within the Kundalini, the Kundalini lets you know that spirit is real. Spirit is alive. Spirit is a, it's a real deal and it has interaction with you. And so, you know, especially if you were not raised in an environment respectful or embracing of prayer like me, there are many, many, many misconceptions about it. Uh, I will only say that it is very important, and I will strongly suggest that you practice it. Christ is real. Mary is real. Yahweh is real. Buddha is real. Allah, Zeus, Sabel, the name of you, all of them are real. And yes, I know, this is a real stretch for some of you, and it was for me too. However we feel about this culturally, this is just how it is behind the veil. There's a lot more consciousness out there than unconsciousness out there. <laughs> Pick one that you like. You know, if you <clears throat> if you like Christ, then do Christ. If you like Mary, then Mary. Then Yahweh, Buddha, Allah, Zeus. Pick one. Great spirit. Pick Kundalini. Because Kundalini is the arm of God reaching into you. So pick Kundalini and and, uh, and and pray. Pray to the Kundalini. I'm not saying pray to all of them. But, you know, pick one that you like. Pray for 
healing for a friend or a stranger or a family member. Pray for yourself. You know, pray for the Kundalini to take you where it is you want to go to become what it is you want to be. Okay? High spiritual consciousness can be very, very helpful. Do not disregard this because you're unaccustomed to it. Stretch yourself and make this a part of your practice. Be as much... Uh, don't be... A, well, let me rephrase this. Um, I need you to move. I need, a, need you to move your body daily. Dance, do Tai Chi, do yoga, five Tibetans, whatever. I want you to move your body. Don't just sit in the chair or lay in the bed. You know, turn the TV off and get out there and do some walking or, or take up uh, uh, equestrianism, ride that horse, get out there, you know, share your activities with another, with another creature. These activities nurture the energy in your body, filling the cells and stretching the muscles. So actively practice hands-on healing. Volunteer, be active and move. Play or walk, but do not sit and be a couch potato because that can become very, very, very painful. That can lead to a stagnant energy response. And it is not comfortable at all. I've had little twinges of it myself just so I could know what it is. And it hurts. The kundalini will hurt you if you are not moving the way it wants you to move. So I'm going to suggest that you move the way you want to move, but move. I don't care if you're on crutches. I don't care if you're in a wheelchair. You know, if you're in a wheelchair, you still got the use of your arms. Okay, so, so move around. Move around. Roll around on the ground. Roll down the hill. Move, 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 move. And I'm not talking about fishing, okay? Fishing is not a very, you know, I'm not looking for the highest cardio exercise, but, but I'm not looking for the lowest either. Fishing is pretty, you know, you put the water in the, you put the pole in the water unless you're fly fishing, and there you go, now you're sitting. No. If you want to fish, go out there with a spear. <laughs> go fishing. <laughs> go fishing that way. Okay, because then you get to move. I want you to move as much as you can. Single nostril breathing. If you get too hot, uh, Sometimes you'll, 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 you'll get hot or you'll get really cold or you get hot and cold many, many different times. And, and this does throw people off quite a bit. So if you get really hot, place your thumb or finger over your right nostril and breathe through the left continuously with medium force. And this will activate the luna cha lunar channel or the Ida channel. The Ida is a Sanskrit name for the lunar channel. Lunar is indicative of sacred femininity. And as the sacred feminine... You know, she expresses in a very cold way, very, very cold, cold, cold. And so as the lunar channel is activated, it will cool your heat. Alternatively, you can get too cold. You can get so cold you're freezing. And no heater, no hot bath, no hot shower, nothing is going to heat you up. And so then you place your finger or thumb over your left Nostril, or over your right nostril. No. Hello, Chrism. I'm interrupting you. Hi, Chrism. You have a caller on the line, Jeffrey. Ah, okay. Let me uh, get on over. This here. is Jeffrey. Hi. Hi, Jeff. Is this you from Florida? No, I'm actually calling from Arkansas. I'm calling because I actually I'm I'm a victim of a, Hi, being a, 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 a couch potato. Okay. Okay. Now. Now. Jeff, are you Fies Bolsonaro? Yeah. Okay, all right. Hi, how may I help you? No, I, I'm just, I'm a couch potato. Do you really think it's uh, that bad if I'm not moving around? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Believe me, I've had the pain. I've had the pain. I know what it's like. You don't want it. You do oh. not want it. Oh, fuck you, you bearded fuck. Don't tell me what to do. Uh, ouch! I'm sorry, everybody. I'm I'm sorry that that happened. Um, we don't get a five second delay here, so yeah. So we'll just bless Jeffrey 
and he can go on his way. And we'll go back. And so this leads to, you know, I was explaining the single nostril breathing. And, uh, uh, yeah, so if you get too cold, cover your left nostril and breathe in with similar fashion through the right nostril. And this will activate your solar channel. Okay, the pingala is the, is the, uh, is the, the Sanskrit name. So when you activate your solar channel, this will warm you up. Now, I don't want you to do this every time you feel hot and cold. I want you to get used to feeling hot and cold. Because the Kundalini will do this. I don't want you to, I don't want you to try to defeat the symptom because it's irritating to you. Okay. Don't do that. Do your best to accept all the symptoms that come to you. But, it, you know, some of them can be overwhelming, and sometimes the heat and the cold can be overwhelming. I, let me give you, just last night, just last night, I was, uh, I was doing a Skype session with a, with a person, and I was just so hot. I was so hot, I just had to, to take off some clothing and go outside. Not, I was not without clothing. I took off my shirt. And I stepped outside just to to feel the cool breeze. Just, and I'll suggest that you do that as well. I'll suggest that you do that as well. Um, if you live in a cold environment and you get blizzards, if you're lucky enough to have blizzards, then you can go naked into a blizzard with, with Kundalini. It will heat you. I have done this. I have done this numerous times in, in Yosemite, in Shasta. I mean, you know, where I could do it and I needed to do it, but, boy, I sure did it. <laughs> and it helps. It really does help. Um, so do that. Do that as best you can. And if you have any questions, once again, you can call. You can you can contact me. But if if, if for some reason you feel that a that a, a feminine uh, person is easier for you to talk with, then then uh, let, let me go over here. Amelia, can you come online? Amelia, you're here. Okay. Can they call you if they need a feminine voice, Amelia? Of course, indeed they can. Um, they can, they can on, contact you at your Gmail account, right? Yep, Kundalini Matters at gmail dot com. There you go. There you go, everybody. So if you if you want the feminine voice and the feminine perspective, and that's great, uh, please please feel free to call to call uh, or to to con- contact uh, Amelia Centura. Uh, you know she will she will she will help you. Uh, you know. With that, let's see. Uh, see, yep. Take five, Chris, and we can all meditate for five minutes. <laughs> thank you, Tim. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah, take five. Um, you know, <laughs> i got 12 minutes left. I'm going to try to finish this up. But, but Tim Ashworth, thank you. Thank you, and it's good to see you. It's good to see you. Let's see here. Going back. Try to finish it up here. Compression prayer, alternate nostril breathing. Now we get into the compression teachings. Uh, you breathe in through the left nostril uh, with the right nostril covered. So you're doing um, alternate nostril breathing here. But as you breathe in through your nose, uh, I would I would suggest that you make up a mantra for yourself. For example, the one that I made up when I was doing this was the love of Christ. And so as I breathed in, I could say the love of Christ, the love of Christ, the love of Christ, or... If you're of a, of a Hindu faith, the love of Krishna, love of Krishna, love of Krishna, or if you're Buddhist, love of Buddha, love of Buddha, love of Buddha, or love of Allah, love of Allah, love of Allah, or I am one with the all that I am. Find one that works for you. But do not leave out a recognition of God, however God is to you. So I would say the love of Christ, and you breathe in three, you say the love of Christ three times as you're breathing in with the, uh, uh, with the right nostril covered. So you're breathing in through the left first. So you love of Christ three times. Love of Christ, love of Christ, love of Christ. Then you hold your breath. Love of Christ, love of Christ, love of Christ. And then you switch nostrils. You plug the left nostril. You breathe out through the right. And you say love of God, love of God, love of God. And then keeping keeping your hands exactly how they are, you breathe in through the right nostril. Love of Christ, love of Christ, love of Christ. You hold Love of Christ, love of Christ, love of Christ. You exhale. Love of God. After you switch the nostrils, you now you're exhaling through the left. Love of God, love of God, love of God. This is the uh, once again. This is 
this is a compression triangular breathing. Okay. So this is really effective. This is really effective, and you'll definitely feel it. Okay. So I have it here on the website. There, you can you can read it, and uh, you can you know practice this. So the practice, the everyday practice, would be something like this: you do the five Tibetans, then you sit down. And you uh, do the alternate nostril breathing. And you do your forgivenesses, your gratitudes, your surrendering. Your, you know, this is constantly in a, in a surrendering mode. And then uh, uh, you do your meditation. And the, and that's it. That is that is a one day practice. That is that should take you a little less than an hour. Okay, a little less than an hour. And uh, it's it's excellent to do when you get up or before you go to bed. Okay. Now we have these safeties in uh, Spanish, we have them in Turkish, we have them in Korean, and we have them in French, and we have them in English. And so you can download all of these if you go to uh, www.kundaliniawakeningsystems1.com. And let's see here. <laughs> Nice, nice, nice. Okay, I've got nine minutes. Anybody need have a question? Anybody have a question? Okay, Rosemary, do you have a question? I'm gonna I'm gonna put you out here since since you're always there. <laughs> Hi, Rosemary. Am I am I connected? You are connected, my dear. More ways wonderful. Than you, know. you know. Uh, I was thinking before, it's really not a question, but I really thank Marilyn for coming on when she did and was able to provide additional learning for us from what you were sharing with her. I haven't done one on a DNS yet. I've done the, the YouTube, but I haven't done the, uh, the the blog talk radio. So, yeah, yeah she brought mm-hmm. that up. I might have to cover that next week. Marilyn, once again, thank you as well. And Rosemary, yeah, well, but I don't want people to be fixated on the DNS. The DNS can be scary, but it doesn't have to be. It's typically our expectations that make it scary. If our expectations aren't being lived up to, uh, then we're in a strange new land, and and that can be hurtful to people. So don't don't buy into the fear if you can. And if you do buy into the fear, I want you to know that there is always always a way back from that. Chris, I would have a, a thought for, uh, in closing. Sometimes grief uh, returns this for, for things or for people that have died in our life. And what, uh, anything in particular that you could uh, provide in that, when that happens? Say that again? Repeat it? Well, when I'm, I've been working on a project in the house here, and my husband's been gone a number of years, but out of the work I was doing last evening, I was back to that time of deep grief, just in missing him. Oh, oh, and it, it yeah, ca- yeah. caught me off guard, and I'm just wondering uh, if you have anything particularly okay. that. Yeah, yeah. First of all, uh, nobody ever really dies. It's just a transition. It's it's really you just transition right out of this this reality. And so it feels like they've died to us. But anybody here who's listening has ever astral projection or had any kind of an experience with OBE, you know that death is not the final answer. It's just a transition phase. It's it's getting out of the taxi into a greater environment. You know, you you landed. You got into a taxi, you drove out to Arizona, we'll just use Maryland's home state, and the doors opened, and we'll say that the uh, the taxi has all the windows closed and you can't see out of them. And so you're in this tiny little empty space of nothingness, right? Can't see anywhere, don't know where you are, and all of a sudden the taxi stops and you open the door and you step out into the night, beautiful Arizona night sky, and the taxi disappears and there you are. There you are. You're alone in this new environment. And and I want you to just embrace it. 
I don't want you to be afraid of strange and different. I want you to walk with love in your eyes and in your heart and in your hands and in your feet. I want you to, to embrace the Kundalini to such a degree that there is no room for fear. I want you to trust that Kundalini, have faith in that process that you're having. Realize that you're in an enlightenment zone. And sometimes we need to experience the darkest of nights in order to appreciate the brightest of light. And I'm going to end it there, and I'm going to say thank you, Rosemary, Santara, Marilyn, and the gentleman that came on. I would mm-hmm. like to thank uh, Bruno and Fasci and all the guests, Ma Devasati and Tim Ashworth. Thank you all for joining us uh, this beautiful day. And I look forward to uh, reconvening next, next week, same, same Kundalini station, same Kundalini channel. Uh, thank you all.